It's James from the Clean Energy Show podcast, a weekly podcast on having a fun discussion about the advancements in clean tech, EVs, solar. But I got my first electric bike. It is the NCM Prog. I got it on Amazon. And uh, like everybody who buys their first e-bike, I absolutely love it. It's hilariously fun. So this is the battery here. I'm just going to take it off. <coughs> it is uh, 13 amp hours. Nice touch is that they give you three keys, uh, which is uh, great, and also a code for the key, so they're not fooling around. I actually dropped it and cracked the case slightly right where those uh, things are, which is too bad as I was unpacking it, so be careful if you buy one of these and unpack it. I've got a different saddle on there. This is the saddle it came with. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, Fairly decent NCM branded uh, uh, saddle, a 30.9 seat post. Uh, there's lighter seat posts. It's a heavy bike, um, but it's not that heavy for for the price. It's reasonable. It's only a few pounds more than other e-bikes uh, that are two or three times as much. So it's uh, you do have a little bit extra pounds. Okay, let's look around here. So we have the controller here, which is built into the mount, which is going on the water bottle mounts. It's solidly put on. There's some wiring that goes underneath, goes right into the controller. So you just slap that battery on and lock it. And since I'm not a commuter, I won't be uh, worrying about somebody stealing it. Although I think it's it's got a fairly good mechanism to prevent theft, but... It's so expensive, I, I'm too scared to leave an e-bike out. Got a quick release on the saddle, which is nice, because my family could try it. It's got various spacers here. It's a fairly upright riding position, by the way. Uh, so if you're a novice, novice cyclist, um, if you're a heavy-duty mountain biker, uh, there's a couple reasons why this bike may not be for you. One is the forks are a Suntour XCT, which is an entry-level pogo stick-like fork. Uh, it's got a good lockout on it Sorry, not a lockout preload. Sorry to get your hopes up. It's a preload and it clicks So you I'm so fat that I had to click this all the way and make it as solid as possible So you click 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 and you do it about 12 times until it stops clicking and then you have your full amount of uh, preload on there for your forks uh, What they this type of fork is a spring coil fork on one side and they're heavy and that contributes to the bike being heavy, but uh, that's okay. Okay, so we have mechanical disc brakes. And uh, I come from hydraulic disc brakes, and I'm surprised that these work. A very good stopping power, although you do have to squeeze a little harder than you do with uh, uh, hydraulic. I mean, that's the issue of hydraulic, right? Is to just squeeze a little bit and get full force. So they're decent. They've got some padding under here. They're... Uh, Tectro, which is a decent brand, but they're not high-end or anything. The left lever has a automatic shut-off on it, so it will shut off the motor. Now we're gonna. This has a, a, a pedal assist, so if you spin the wheel, it will. Well, I have to turn it on first. This is display. I still have got a plastic over it. Don't hate me for that. Nope, got to turn on the battery. So I got to push a button on the battery. So it lights up, then I hit this, it goes through a resetting display, you can see it's 36 volt there. And uh, it goes about 30, 32 kilometers an hour maximum. I haven't been able to hack this and make it go faster. There's your battery readout. You've got various displays which can go on there, your speedometer. You can hold the button on uh, for two seconds and make it light up permanently. I like it, it's a good display. Um, it, don't let the plastic on top fool you, I haven't taken that off yet. So you've got uh, click shifters here, thumb shifters. They work very well. They're from Shimano. Uh, they really only have one level of uh, thumb shifters for a seven-speed uh, bike, which is what this has. Apparently, it can go up to nine. The wheel will go up to nine. So I'm going to do some pedaling here. You'll see that it kicks in after about a half a turn on the pedal. And there's six speeds. So you have different levels of assist. It's on assist level one and go up to level six, which is the maximum. If you keep going, it'll go back to zero and vice versa. It'll 
go completely around. So this is the throttle. You can use that. It's either on or off. So it's full on or nothing. So you, you can see that the motor is not loud. You just hear the uh, sprockets or the, the cassette going hard. And I've let go of that now. I've got mud on the wheel, which is why it's wobbling, by the way, a great deal of mud. Or poop or something, I don't know, I took it out. Nice thing about electric bikes is they just cruise right over grass. Things that would normally slow you down, they cruise. One of the nice touches here is the Ultus uh, derailleur. A lot of bikes, uh, electric and non-electric, come with Turney, which is the entry-level Shimano. This has Altus on it, which is the next step up, and it's a decent derailleur. And uh, what happens with a crappy derailleur is they don't have a lot of spring action, and you get into lousy gear changes and so forth. So this one has been working very well for me so far. It's been a lot of fun. Um, the gears, uh, it's a turny derailleur on the front for three speeds. A lot of e-bikes don't have three speeds on the front. Uh, I find it necessary because if you're using the full power, you're going to want the hardest gear. Otherwise, you're not doing anything with your legs. So you go to the hardest gear and you keep up with the motor, which is about 30, 32 kilometers an hour. Uh, I'm very overweight and it doesn't help me get up hills very well. But uh, off-road hills, it doesn't help me get up very well. So I'm often using the easiest gear. Uh, if you're on a road, it, it helps you get up hills uh, perfectly well. You do slow down, of course. It doesn't have a lot of oomph. Um, the better mechanism is to have a mid-drive motor, which is here in the pedals. But that's much more expensive. And uh, also, I was worried because of my weight that it would break the chain if it put too much torque on the chain. The chains break easily with mid-drive motors. And I thought, well, the heavier I am, the more problem that could be. But also, it was out of my price range. Okay, the frame is decent. Uh, it's probably a few pounds heavier than some frames. The wheels are going to be heavier than uh, some wheels because the gauge of the spoke is, is harder, is thicker. Uh, I think it's 16 gauge spokes. Um, so yeah, you got a sturdier wheel that can deal with the torque. It does, it's got a gear drive motor, not a brushless motor. So that gives you a bit more torque, but it's supposed to be noisier. Not this one. This one is not noisy at all. You will the tire noise will be noisier. That's me turning the, the throttle on and off. The throttle is nice if you hit a hill or if you just want full speed. Say you're pedaling along under a lower assist level, you want some full assist, you just go like that. Or if you want to keep going and you want to rest your, your buttock and your taint, on the seat, I put my own saddle on up there, then you can do that. You can uh, just use the throttle to have a, a bit of a break. Usually I do it for like 20 seconds. I'm just starting out the season and getting in shape. Uh, the the uh, Volgo um, um, pedals are okay. They're perfectly fine. They've got nubs on them for off-road use, which keeps your foot on the bike gripped. Uh, you can take the uh, reflectors off. Uh, they were a little tight when I got them. That's normal, and they're perfectly loose now. The crank is okay. The tires are okay. It's a... Uh, um, so you can see the groove there on the tires. That's kind of for on-road to have a sort of a consistent uh, um, contact with a hard surface, and then you break out to the nubs on the outside. Uh, it's okay. They're, the tires are perfectly fine. They're not uh, exceptional. One thing that are nice touches are the... Uh, I'm not a, I haven't been a big fan of this sort of style of uh, grip, but it is nice, and it's got uh, a locking mechanism at the end. It's actually a high-quality grip. This is one of the nice touches on this bike is uh, the components are, are decent components. They're not putting on the cheapest garbage and and saying goodbye to you. So, like I said, it was uh, designed in Germany, NCM Prague, and uh, 
I think uh, Leon Cycles in the United States is carrying them. And I think that's where the Canadian bikes come from. So as far as I'm concerned, they have better components, better specs, like the 13 amp hour motor will get you longer range. I haven't tested the range, but I imagine if you're thin and you're riding on a calm day at room temperature and going on a flat surface for you could probably go for what they say you can go and that is up to 60 miles i wouldn't be surprised if that is possible that would be on assist one while you are pedaling okay so that's going to be the furthest you could go is 100 kilometers more likely though you could get two to three hours of riding out of this because you're probably going to use it on higher power levels and being a mountain bike you're probably going to use it on trails and uh, surfaces that uh, mountain bikes are made to go on because it's not very efficient for going on pavement. If you want a pavement bike, I suggest getting a hybrid or something like that that has thinner tires, thinner, harder tires. I did pump these. I think they, these tires take 55 pounds. I pumped them up towards their hardest uh, level. And uh, I took off the kickstand. Kickstand is just dead weight to anybody who's half serious about cycling. Just lean it up against something. You don't need this extra third of a pound or whatever it is on an already heavy bike. Um, it charges in about six hours from empty. I've only had to do it for a little while. The manual is very well written. Uh, it's like a the equivalent of a good uh, bike store bike, you know, name brand bicycle. Like uh, it's it's what you want. It's it's got the uh, the price point and yet it's got the quality components and the attention to actual cyclists. So I like it. I respect the company. I respect the product. And it is a lot of fun. I have no problems with it whatsoever. It's uh, normal that the fork there be subpar, but it's still better than your Walmart bikes. It's, it's going to be a better fork than uh, other bikes. Even similarly priced bikes have very thin, crappy forks. This one will be fine. You'll see a bit of oil on it, and that's okay because it's not an oil um, that's just lubricant. It's not an oil compression. It's a coil like a spring in there So you can upgrade that fork for about $300 Canadian and get a uh, recon from Rock Shocks and uh, That will have an air and a lockout. You can get a $225 shock Canadian from Rock Shocks that has a lockout Lockouts are nice because you don't always need suspension at the front. A lot of times you don't. If you're going uphill, you want to lock it out. If you're on a flat surface, you want to lock it out. Uh, forks are kind of overkill for what most people use mountain bikes for. Anyway, this is my review. If you have any questions, uh, I'm trying to help people because there wasn't much online. There was, I'd like to thank the, the two people who did post videos for the NCM Prog online because uh, that helped me buy my bike and I wanted to give back and and give you a review of this bike myself. So any questions, I will try to answer them. Unless I die from COVID or bike related illnesses. Anyway, thanks for listening and tune into the Clean Energy Show podcast available anywhere you get podcasts every week on Wednesdays. Bye for now. This is James.